sources tell me and colleague Tom Pelissero that the New York Jets have agreed to terms on a trade for Aaron Rodgers. I knew this trade was going to happen. I told y'all the Packers had no choice but to send Rodgers to the Jets. Call me crazy, but I think Aaron Rodgers to the Jets will be much more like Tom Brady to the Bucks than it will be like Russell Wilson to the Broncos. Protection breaks down and time runs out. Down. In all honesty, people want to know how I feel, and the truth is, there is no way in the world I have processed this. I understand that millions of things have happened yesterday in the world that in the big picture were more significant than this. But from a sports perspective, this is about as overwhelming as anything that could possibly happen. Six, eight months of anticipation, all the excitement and all the possibilities, and for it to come to an end like that, that quickly, there's no way I have fully taken in the magnitude of what actually happened on the fourth play last month. Jets are currently five and eight, sit third place in the AFC East. It has a less than 1% chance of making the postseason. What do you think about that? What's the point? What, what are we proving? Like, why? There's, what, what do you have to prove? We know what you can do. Heal up, rest up, get ready for next year. Let Zach Wilson continue to run the show. His whole thing is about, I want to show medical professions that I know more, I know better than them. Aaron Rodgers is targeting a return in mid-December, just three months after his Achilles surgery. Now, two months after his surgery. So you think about all this together and the amount of stuff that he has to accomplish between now and potentially five weeks to hit that goal just seems like an absolutely not safe progression of what's generally considered acceptable and safe to get back to your sport. Feels like he's spinning it. I, I may or may not have chatted with uh, Source Says close to the situation saying feeling very good like ball coming out very good legs feel good feel light feel upbeat is that your sense of what's happening over there for the quarterback of the new york jets as well yeah i mean i'm not surprised that i read that he what he is fully clear to do everything that he looks good the Jets are a team that have been less than great for a while now, but that could all change this season. There are a few key additions that could help a team with a great defense and a quarterback who is coming off an Achilles injury. And although there are some risks involved with these moves that they made, it could potentially all pay off in the very end. Aaron Rodgers is back, the offensive line may be improved, and that should help an already good running game. And with the increase in production from the running game, this could also contribute to what is already considered a very good defense in this league. There are many key reasons to why this team could be successful next season, and I want to highlight a few of those today. But before we get into that conversation, don't forget to like, comment, and also subscribe to the channel. We're on the way to 2K, and with that, let's get into this video. So, as we all know, last year the Jets made a trade for Aaron Rodgers. The hype was built up and the stage was set for a QB looking to prove that he's still one of the best in the league after missing the playoffs in green bay the year before and rogers was on a mission however the hype would soon die down quickly as he would tear his achilles not long after his debut and this injury would essentially end the season for the new york jets we would see zach wilson start for majority of that period a guy who would go on to throw for 2271 yards eight touchdowns and seven interceptions not that impressive he did had one good game against the Texans and this is in my personal opinion his best game as a pro where he threw for 301 yards and two touchdowns and with Nathaniel Hackett running this offense I don't necessarily believe that it is really catered to anyone other than Aaron Rodgers I'm not necessarily making excuses for him but I will say the Jets don't necessarily do the best in terms of grooming young quarterbacks they don't necessarily pick them that well either on top of that he did have to run for his life often the offensive line did have some injury issues but sometimes he just held on to the ball way too long which can make an offensive line look worse than they actually are however even though the season did not necessarily get anywhere close to where many Jets fans may have wanted it to go there were still some bright spots during that season as per usual for the last few years or so the Jets defense continues to be the calling card for this group they have one of the best corners in the game in Sauce Gardner who is coming off of his first all pro season a great defensive tackle in Quinn Williams a great and up-and-coming linebacker in Quincy Williams and other guys on the defense side of the ball 
So I have no doubt in my mind that they will be at the very least a top 10 defense, if not a top five defense this season. And so now let's fast forward to this year and talk about two guys from this past NFL draft. With the 11th pick in the 2024 NFL draft, the New York Jets select Olu Fashanu, tackle Penn State. A 6'6", 312 pound offensive lineman who is going to more than likely play left tackle and someone who can learn from vet Tyron Smith who had some injury concerns. So if he has to miss some time, the Jets are prepared. The upside is there and they also added John Simpson and Morgan Moses to this offensive line, a group that can be very good once the chemistry is formed. There are some concerns around John Simpson due to the fact that he was cut two years ago by the Raiders. However, he started all 17 games for the Ravens last year. So which year will the Jets get? With that being said, let's look at another guy from this past draft class. With the 65th pick in the 2024 draft, the New York Jets select Malachi Corley, wide receiver out of Western Kentucky. A guy that was drafted in the third round from Western Kentucky. Last year, he had 981 receiving yards, 97 receptions, and 11 touchdowns. And from what little news is coming out of camps, he looks to be doing very well. And with that being said, let's look at some more things that the Jets had going on in their interesting offseason that could potentially pay off. First, let's look at Mike Williams, a guy who has had injury concerns in the past, but if fully healthy, he is a pretty good wide receiver. In 2021, he had 1,146 yards receiving and nine touchdowns. In 2022, he had 895 yards and four touchdowns, but he did miss three games. And then the following year, well, he tore his ACL. Can he have flashes of the year that he had in 2021? Well, we will see. He is on a one-year deal, so the risk here is minimum compared to the potential reward. On top of that, it's not like he's going to be asked to carry the load at wide receiver. That's Gary Wilson's job, a guy who I have felt bad for for some time now because he goes into a season thinking that he has Aaron Rodgers. And then in the blink of an eye is Zach Wilson for the majority of things. And you can say this about the entire team, but when you're a wide receiver, losing a QB just hurts the that much more. Last year, he had 95 receptions for 1,042 yards and three touchdowns. This year, I believe him and Brees Hall would take another step that many Jets fans believe that they can do. And this is due to the fact that it will be easier with a QB like Aaron Rodgers at the helm and these improvements that are going around on that offensive line. A fully healthy Aaron helps the Jets with many of the issues that they had last year. We're going to talk about him in a second, but I want to throw out a name that that could potentially make a few plays this year that many Jets fans probably know and others may not know, and that's Jason Brownlee, a guy that was super talented coming out of Southern Miss. At Southern, he had 891 yards receiving, 55 receptions, eight touchdowns in 13 games. Last year in Green Bay, he worked his way up as a undrafted rookie, and now he is in that second string rim on the depth chart. If given the opportunity, I think he can make some noise. Now, with my sleeper pick, pick out of the way, let's talk about the trump car, and that is Aaron Rodgers, a guy who many Jets fans believe can take this team to a place that they haven't seen since 2010, and yes, that's the playoff. With their last and only Super Bowl win coming against the Baltimore Colts at Super Bowl III in 1969, with many fans hoping to get a run from Aaron Rodgers before he decides to hang it up, and I believe he can do that, but listen to me for a second. I'm gonna play devil's advocate for a minute or two in probably a second or so. Let's talk about why this may mean more of the same for our good friend Aaron Rodgers. And then I'll talk about why the Jets, and when I say the Jets, I really do mean the Jets, are good enough to end the playoff drought and make a run. All right. Aaron Rodgers is a guy who won his first Super Bowl in 2011. The Packers had a great run, but since that run, what has Aaron Rodgers done since? He is 7-9 in the playoffs, and in that record, he is 0-4 in NFC Championship games. Now, on the flip side, in Aaron Rodgers' defense, in 10 of those playoff losses, his defense has given up around 30 points per game. That should not be an issue for the Jets. 
And I'm not saying Aaron Rodgers hasn't had any bad moments in the playoff because yes, him like any other QB, they have had some not so good moments in the playoffs. Aaron Rodgers will not have to worry about the defense. Aaron Rodgers needs Jets just as much as the Jets need him. His last year in Green Bay, he has 3,695 yards, 26 touchdowns and 12 interceptions, which was a down year for him. It's only the third time he threw for over 10 interceptions in his entire career. And a weird year for him filled with question marks because the team as a whole was super young and they were all just trying to figure it out. However, this could potentially be a pay Manny with Denver type of run. With Aaron Rodgers in his last few years as a quarterback, the Jets are a group with a fantastic defense. Aaron Rodgers is a quarterback that brings some stability to that position that they have been missing for years. Random side note though, I play plan to talk about Hassan Reddick, but as of right now, they're in contract talks, something teams go through all the time, but I would have thought that this deal would have gotten done sooner because they traded for him. And usually when you trade for somebody, you do have plans to sign that player, or at least you should have something figured out. But I'm sure I'll make another video about the Jets at some point in time in the future. And by that time, that deal would probably be done. Long story short, I think he's going to be a great addition to the team. And I did make majority of this video before Aaron Rodgers missed the mandatory mini camp. And my thoughts and opinion on that is Aaron Rodgers at some point in time does something to garner headlines during the season, before the season or after the season. And at this point in his career, it's just something that I have come to expect from him. And I do have one more question. Is Robert Sala and Nathaniel Hackett the right duo for this job? I don't believe in Hackett, but Salah is a guy who is very interesting because I do believe that he knows what he is doing on the defensive side of the ball. And defense is very valuable in the league, especially in a time where most people are looking for young offensive minded head coaches. And maybe I'm a little bit too harsh on Hackett from what I've seen in his Broncos tenure, but let me know if you guys think that I'm being way too hard on Nathaniel Hackett. Anyways, let me know what you guys think down below about this entire situation and until next time make sure that you like comment and also subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys in the next video